everyone! Welcome to our first online art class video. We will begin by drawing Picasso, our art class Pikachu and resident mascot. Let's get started! I am going to begin by drawing Picasso's eyes near the center of my paper. Notice how important it is that I am drawing light because I might need to erase. It is always a good idea to draw light. As we say in class, draw light till you have it right. If I look at my model Picasso, I can see that his eyes are kind of far apart. So I wanna make sure to add that on my paper. Now I'm gonna add Picasso's nose at the bottom middle of my eyes and his mouth underneath that. His nose is an upside down triangle and his mouth looks like an upside down three. The bottom of his mouth is just a curvy line with a little tongue added in the center. Picasso's cheeks are also circles, about the same size as his eyes. They're not directly underneath, but a little bit off to the side of his eyeballs. I will try to measure the top of his second cheek to match the top of his first cheek. That way, they're even. Directly below Picasso's mouth, I'm going to draw his bow tie. It's a nearly square shape with rounded edges. Then I'm gonna draw two curvy lines that connect. I'll do the same on both sides, but don't worry if they're not exactly symmetrical. We know symmetrical means the same on both sides. Picasso's tie is a little bit askew. After all, he's too busy thinking about his next painting to worry about fashion. I added some folds on Picasso's bow tie to help it look just a tad more realistic. Now I need to draw the sides of his bow tie around his neck. Notice how I'm using curvy lines. These curves help make my piece look a little bit more three-dimensional, which is how it would exist in real life. Continuing with curvy lines, I am gonna draw the sides of Pikachu's face. Now I still need to add his ears and his hat, so I'm not gonna finish that circle quite yet. I measure where I want his ears to start and then begin with a curvy line very similar to the one I added for his face. Picasso's ears end in a sort of point. Pikachu's ears are inspired by real life mice. In fact, Pikachu roughly translates in Japanese to electric mouse or sparkle mouse. We know Pikachu is an electric type Pokemon. In fact, Many Pokemon's names come from Japanese words because Pokemon originated in Japan. And of course, I can't forget the black parts on Pikachu's ears. To draw in these, I just make a curvy line on both ears, almost like a frown face line. Now that I have his ears, I can finish off his head with a final curvy line at the top. An artist Pikachu would not be complete without his beret. A beret is a type of French hat that became popular among artists in the 19th century. People don't really wear berets much now, but they still have come to symbolize artists. I've decided to make Pikachu's beret look a little bit more realistic by bringing it down over the edge of his ears by using another curved line at the bottom of the beret, almost like a smile line this time, I give the illusion that it is three-dimensional. Because I've been drawing with light lines, I can just erase what would be behind the hat. Drawing light also means that I can erase as I go around and fix up some little parts of Pikachu. Finally, I'll add his shoulders. The last part of drawing Picasso will be his trusty paintbrush. You could use a ruler to draw the lines of the paintbrush or just freehand it like me. 
I don't mind if they're a little bit curvy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once I have the general shape of my paintbrush, I can go back and draw in the metal bit. The official term for this is the ferrule, with the small part below it being called the crimp. However, in art class, we all know this as the danger zone because we never put our hands there. Just like us, Picasso never puts his little paws in the danger zone because he doesn't want to get his fur all painty. Finally, I will add some drippy paint at the end of Picasso's paintbrush. I can swipe away any extra eraser pieces and then add my finishing touches to Picasso. Now he's ready for Sharpie and color. I will go over all of the lines I want to keep very slowly and carefully with Sharpie. It doesn't really matter where you start. I just chose to begin with Pikachu's mouth. If you make a mistake while outlining your work with Sharpie, it's okay. I'm gonna show you how to go back over your Sharpie lines to make them your very best. Let's just get our main lines down first. finish outlining my work with Sharpie, I can go back and erase any remaining pencil lines. You could leave Picasso just like this and he'd look fantastic. However, I want to show you one last trick with Sharpie. In my older grades, we often talk about line weight and the difference that it can make in a work of art. Line weight is simply the thickness or thinness of a line. Very line weight can make an art piece much more interesting. Varying line weight can also make our art look more three-dimensional. Thick lines show that something is closer up, while thin lines show that it's further away. I can also use thick lines to show the outline of an object, while thin lines are reserved for finer details. I'm going to finish up my line work on Picasso here keeping in mind all the things we just talked about. And we're just about finished. You could choose to leave Picasso black and white or color him with whatever materials you have on hand, be it crayons, colored pencils, or markers. I cannot wait to see your Picasso Pikachus and what sorts of creative twists you might give your own drawings. You are welcome to take a picture of your Pikachu and send it to me via my school email. I might just feature some in my next video. See you soon and already on.